Hello there, my name is Jason Schmaltz and I'm an AMJ single pitch instructor and today I'm going to talk to you about one of my most favorite subjects and one of the things I love to do which is taking awesome photos of people climbing. Uh, aside from sending your uh, sick project, uh, taking awesome photos of yourself doing it and of your peers is probably the most rewarding thing in climbing. And uh, I, I really think it's so important to take pictures, especially in the digital age that we have now, because you get to tell a story and you get to start conversations. And uh, frankly, it's how I got into climbing was seeing cool pictures of uh, my friends and, uh, and pro climbers on big walls and saying, man, I wonder what that feels like. Um, so today I'm going to show you uh, three different places where you can uh, take pictures uh, while you're climbing with your friends. Uh, but before we get into all that, just one basic thing to think about. Uh, no matter what camera you have, whether it's an iPhone or a mirrorless camera or something in between, a point and shoot, um, I don't want you to get too caught up in all the advanced settings. Uh, there's three main things to think about when you're taking pictures. And the first one, is just good light. So when you're um, framing up your picture, think about where the sun is, think about the sky, how bright it is relative to the climber, uh, and try to get the climber in the good light. You want the climber lit up. So how can you arrange yourself uh, to get the climber in the light that shows uh, them in action? The second thing I want you to think about is uh, proper framing or what professional photographers call composition. Uh, so this is just having a nice aesthetic uh, layout in the photo of the climber, the landscape, the rock, and trying to make all that kind of look pleasing to the eye. And just understanding the rule of thirds, uh, where if you divide the, uh, the frame into thirds, both vertically and horizontally, and trying to get uh, the climber or any other points of focus where those corners cross is going to help you just get a nice aesthetic shot without thinking too hard about it. And there's some settings in the camera that will actually set up that um, rule of thirds grid for you if you need some help. But it's not rocket science and you can just eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then the last thing I want you to think about um, when you're taking pictures is uh, content. Uh, I mean, just get something that looks cool. Um, sometimes you can have bad light, you can have bad composition. But if you got the climber doing something cool, maybe it's like taking a, a lead fall, or maybe it's um, two people talking on a, on a hanging belay or something like that. Um, just that in and of itself uh, can make for a really great picture. Uh, so let's uh, start climbing now, and I'll show you three different vantage points, three of the most common vantage points where you can get pictures uh, that you can show your friends and share with your family and get psyched about the, about the climb. Okay, so the first place we're going to shoot photos from is the most common place, which is the ground. The uh, reason it's most common, obviously, is everybody has access to it. Of course, also being the most common is also the most missed shot because everybody's so psyched to be climbing, they just can't uh, think about problem solving for photography. They just want to take pictures of the climber, so they usually take pictures directly up and get an awesome shot of the climber's butt. Uh, but with a little bit of problem solving, if the ground is the only place you have access to, uh, then you can uh, get some pretty nice shots uh, from the ground uh, part of the climb. 
So one of the most common techniques that you can use uh, when shooting from the ground is just move to the side and try to take side profiles of the climber as they start to climb. You don't even have to be up that high. Of course, if you can gain five or 10 feet, that's perfect because now you're gonna be able to get the climber, uh, you know, even shooting down a little bit, but you're gonna be able to get that side profile of them. And one tip to do this uh, is to uh, make your aperture uh, high, so uh, make your f-stop low. Uh, in order to decrease your depth of field. And what that does is that gives you the real crisp shot of the climber, but then the background's blurry. And the reason that's helpful is then uh, when people are looking at the picture, they can't necessarily tell that the climber's only maybe three feet off the ground. It just looks like they're climbing and it's cool. It also focuses on the climber. Uh, in general, the more you can zoom in, in most climbing shots, the better. There's a couple places that we'll go over where you can take a wide lens and capture the full landscape. But from the ground, the more you can zoom in, the better, uh, because then you're focused more on the climber versus, oh, we're low, and it's not as cool. Another te technique you can do when shooting from the ground is if you can't get to the side or you can't get that high up on the side, is you actually can shoot right below the climber if you work with them a little bit. So there's two ways to do that. Uh, one way is when they're still relatively close to you, uh, have the climber look down at their uh, gear belt and try to pick something off. And you can really get a cool, snazzy shot of them uh, looking down. And there's a story to tell, hey, I was you know, doing my first trad lead or I was leading sport or or something like that, or I was just getting a carabiner off for whatever reason. And that's kind of a cool, uh, you know, content. We talk about content as one of the three things to be focused on, uh, things that you can take from the ground. Another uh, cool shot that you can take uh, from uh, the ground is as the climber progresses, now start to think about zooming out and how can you get a cool side profile of the climber on the, on the mountain showing the, the magnitude of the mountain, but also the climber on it. And a couple tips for that is uh, to ask the climber or direct the climber or direct yourself on the ground where you can see some space between the climber's body and the rock. Uh, that is just aesthetically pleasing to have that light shining through uh, where you can see the climber's arms or something like that or their legs. And it shows the size of the mountain, it shows how high they are, and it's a unique shot. Uh, for, for these types of shots, try to use the light to your advantage. It's actually okay if the background is really bright and the climber's dark, uh, or vice versa, just something that shows a contrast between the climber and the rock and the background. Uh, so try to uh, work that to your advantage. Uh, you can see I took some pictures uh, both with my iPhone and with my regular camera. So if you don't have a fancy camera, you can still get some pretty cool shots from the ground uh, just with thinking about these types of principles. A second great place to take photos of your friends while they're climbing, and especially if you're hosting, uh, it's kind of a mandatory place you need to be, is from the top. So you can see I've got a, a top uh, anchor set up here. I'm uh, uh, clipped in with my PAS. Of course, you can also be clothed in or whatever you're doing. Uh, if you're going to belay from the top, uh, even better because you're killing two birds with one stone. But uh, it's a great perspective to take relative to the bottom of the climber climbing up because you show the climber in action and you also show the height of the climb. Um, so there's two ways to take good pictures from here. One is as the climber's far away, go ahead and try to zoom in as much as your camera will allow and make your aperture so that you have a short depth of field. So again, you're really focused on the climber and the background is kind of blurry to just to give that action feel of the shot. Uh, one thing you want to focus on on this type of shooting is uh, you'll want it to look real crisp. So you won't want to have like blurs as the climber's moving. And the way to do that is to get your shutter speed up to like four or five hundred, uh, four or five hundredths of a second. Uh, so at high aperture, when the lens is open a lot, uh, that should be pretty easy to do. But if it's still not uh, fast, you can change the ISO. Uh, to make that uh, go up, which increases uh, your sensor's ability to sense light uh, and will cause the shutter speed to get faster. Uh, be careful when you're adjusting the ISO because uh, if it's too high on a lot of cameras, it can get a little bit grainy. That's why when you take pictures in the dark, sometimes they look real grainy because the ISO is turned up really high. So it's something to be careful with and each camera is different. So make sure that you kind of experiment a little bit with that before you turn that knob too far up. 
Now, as the climber approaches you, now is the chance to get that awesome magazine shot. The wide angle with the climber reaching up um, and, the, and the really uh, high feel of the climb. So I go, I switch to a wide angle lens or I even shot the shots that you'll see in this video with my iPhone um, of the climber reaching up to maybe the second to last or last hold right before they get to your feet looking at their hand as they reach up, maybe have a high foot. And that's just a great shot to take to show like a super dynamic move, but then also show just the magnitude of the climb. And that's a great storytelling picture for your friends uh, whenever you uh, guys get back to the pub or wherever you go after the climb. The third place that you can get a great perspective, but it's a little bit difficult to set up, is from the side by setting up the, a static line. So I've set up a static line here on a secondary anchor to take awesome pictures as uh, my friends climb up this pitch. Uh, two good perspectives to look at when you're shooting from the side is of course shooting straight down as they're far away from you, zoomed in with a high aperture uh, or low f-stop, and so you're getting a short depth of field and really getting focus on the client. Um, or on your friend. Uh, as the climber starts to get uh, parallel with you, kind of online like we are, uh, I switch to a wide lens, and this is where I go uh, low aperture um, or high depth of field, and try to get uh, the mountains or the landscape in the background with the climber uh, climbing up. Similar to like we did on the ground with this, this type of profile shot, I wanna to try to get separation of the climber with the mountain uh, just to show just to show a more dynamic uh, shot with light coming in uh, just showing the action of climbing a little bit more than if they're just you know laying on uh, the mountain like this and waiting to take a shot uh, uh, the third thing to look at as you're shooting from above is having the climber look up uh, versus taking pictures of them looking at the rock or looking down at footwork uh, sometimes you need to coach them to look up uh, because naturally they're going to want to look down at their feet uh, for footwork or things like that or look right in this area for handholds. But uh, seeing their face while they're climbing, it really adds to the uh, photo. And then in editing, uh, a lot of times what you can do to make the photo pop is uh, you can take a brush and brush around their face and up the exposure a little bit relative to the rest of the picture and it really makes the picture pop. Hey, I hope you got a lot of uh, information out of seeing those different perspectives for taking photos. Uh, a couple just general pieces of advice. Uh, firstly and foremost, don't be afraid to take risks when you're doing photos. Uh, I know we talked about light and composition and everything, but if you see something that you might think, oh, I might be able to make this look cool in editing, or I might be able to crop here and here or whatever, um, hey, go ahead and shoot it and see what happens. We're in the digital age, so that's one of the great things. You get all this feedback. So basically, the more photos you take, the better, the more you're gonna learn. And then secondly, if you don't have a cool camera or whatever, don't worry about it. Just start shooting pictures with your phone. You can take so many awesome pictures with your phone, especially this day and age. I mean, it's really unbelievable. And you saw even some pictures I took in this video were on my phone and they look great. And that's a great way, again, just getting a repetition in for taking photos. And the more repetition you get, the better your eye is gonna get to see the photo. You're gonna learn the light. You're gonna learn how your camera or your phone adjusts to the light and be able to get really cool pictures. Hey, I hope you liked that video. Uh, if you did enjoy it, got something out of it, be sure to give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, suggestions, leave those uh, below, I'll try to answer those. And uh, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Hey, I'll see you out at the crag.